Hey everybody, so in this video I'm going to talk about what classes you should take to ultimately prepare for the MCAT. Now my goal is to kind of make this relevant to both, say, a freshman who's just starting out, who wants to know what classes uh, to take over their entire career, and say somebody who wants to take the MCAT next semester, or somebody who wants to know uh, when they can take the MCAT, what classes they'll have to have finished before they want to take the MCAT. And so I'm going to try and discuss kind of both scenarios. So to start with, I want to talk about the chem phys section of the MCAT. Now, when I was making my review courses, one of the things that I did before I started was I went through the old AAMC exams and I really went through and tried to figure out the weighting of the subjects for uh, the old exams. So what I mean by that is, let's go ahead and start with, say, physics. So for physics, I estimated that there were about 12 to 15 questions per exam. And of course, in most universities, physics is covered uh, by two classes, right? So each one is one semester. And those are Physics 1 and Physics 2. And so you can see that's not a lot of questions. So Physics is not probably the most important subject, but it is still decently important. Now next we've got General Chemistry, sometimes also known as Gen Chem. And I would estimate that Gen Chem is about 20 to 21 questions on the MCAT. So you can see that it's a lot more than Physics. Um, and of course, Gen Chem in most universities is also going to be represented by two classes, Gen Chem 1 and Gen Chem 2. So, so far we've got four classes that you've got to take. And finally, in terms of this section, we've got Organic Chemistry, also sometimes known as Orgo. And Orgo is about 8 to 10 questions per exam. So we can see that Orgo, of course, is the, uh, the lowest yield, we say, right? Meaning that there is the least in terms of Orgo, uh, and Orgo, of course, is two classes, Orgo 1 and Orgo 2. And so far, so good. I think all of these classes are classes that you understood that you've, you've got to take because you know that this material is on the MCAT, right? Now, next we've got biochemistry, sometimes also just known as biochem. And I estimate that biochem has about, uh, I would say, maybe 28 questions. It sort of depends on how in-depth your biochem class is, so I'm going to get to that in a second. Um, so this is kind of where we start to get to a little bit rough, uh, you know, rough estimates, right? Orgo, gen chem, and physics, it's fairly clear those subjects are, are self-contained, uh, and it's clear what is tested. Uh, but with biochem, it starts to get a little bit iffy, and I'll explain why in a second. Biochem, I always consider to be the, and I've talked about this before, I consider it to be the single most important class. Uh, in most universities, biochem is just one semester. And in some classes, in other universities, it's uh, it's two semesters. So it sort of depends. But biochem is the single most important class or uh, set of classes for the MCAT. And so biochem is absolutely the most critical uh, subject. Now, finally, we get to the biology material. Biology is a little bit iffy because typically there's not one class uh, that's going to cover the biology material for the MCAT. And there's not even, even across uh, universities, it kind of varies in, in terms of uh, what classes are offered. So biology, which I estimate there are about, say, 60 questions. And again, this is a bit of a rough estimate. Now, what classes should you take for biology, right? So all of these so far have been very clear, fairly clear, I think. But with biology, it starts to get very confusing because, again, there are different classes. So for biology, one of the most essential classes, I would say, is some kind of a physiology class. Physio. Physiology. And physiology is going to be essential because... Uh, there are a decent number of physiology questions on the MCAT. Uh, and physiology, by physiology, I mean different systems. I mean the GI system, the cardiovascular, respiratory, nephro nephro nephrology, the kidney, the endocrine system, the neural system, the muscular system. This, uh, this material, the physiology material, is about 13 to 15 questions per exam. 13 to 15 questions. And so that makes it quite significant. Now, when I say physiology, I don't mean anatomy and physiology. Some people, lots of universities offer both classes. They offer both anatomy and physio, and then a physio class by itself. And typically, the anatomy class has a lab associated with it. Um, that anatomy class is going to be a waste of time when it comes to the MCAT, with respect to the MCAT. Yes, there may be very, very occasional uh, questions relating to that, but really, you're going to want to focus your energy on a physiology class. So you might choose to take, for example, an anatomy class because you're, you find it interesting or because it's required for your major or for lots of other reasons. Uh, and that's fine. That's perfectly legitimate. But do keep in mind that that's not going to help you much for the MCAT. So 
you might, you may, for example, choose to schedule your anatomy class after you take your MCAT because it's not really going to make a big difference anyway. What will make a difference is the physio side. The, that is to say the systems, how the systems work. Again, the endocrine, the GI, the neuro, that sort of thing. So if your university offers that type of class, I would strongly recommend you take that. Uh, before the MCAT. And again, most universities do. The other thing that I would recommend is some type of a cell bio class. Some universities offer cell bio itself as a class. Other universities offer something similar, right? Something similar to cell. Uh, and by the way, cell bio is not the same as microbio, microbiology. Microbiology is going to have lots of material that you're not going to need to know, which is it's still going to be helpful because there's going to be lots of material that you do need to know, but there's lots of extraneous material. And what I mean by cell bio specifically for the MCAT I mean cells, cell division, how cells kind of develop. I mean DNA structure, transcription, and translation, that sort of thing. And I would say that this class is going to cover about 28 to 32 questions for the MCAT. So this class is going to be a very, very important class. And again, typically you learn a lot of this material. You learn transcription, translation. You might learn that, for example, in your biochem class. Uh, so again, reminds us of the importance of biochem. I included it in cell bio because uh, a lot of people learn it exclusively in cell bio, and because in general the double AMC includes it more in cell bio material. Now what are some other biology classes that might be useful? Um, so these are the, again, these are the two main ones, but there are going to be some other ones. So for example, I, I mentioned previously microbiology. Microbiology is often a very tough class, um, and I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but microbio is going to cover lots of the same stuff as cell bio, so you might choose to take that. Um, but some classes that I, that I haven't necessarily mentioned yet are genetics. Now, there is a small genetics component, a component of like exclusive genetics in terms of uh, Punnett squares, uh, pedigrees, and things like that. I, I estimate there are about maybe two questions per exam on that, so not really very much. Um, but a genetics class that has that focus but also talks about uh, DNA structure, transcription, translation, and kind of like gene expression and things like that, that type of a class is going to be relatively useful. So these numbers are going to be overlapping, but I would estimate that that type of class is going to cover maybe 14 uh, questions per exam. And again, that's a, that's a rough estimate, and it depends on your specific, uh, you know, the specific syllabus and the way the professor teaches and things. Um, so that's just an estimate. But again, a genetics class with that focus is going to be a very useful class. And again, as I said before, there's a decent amount of overlap between these two classes. And so in terms of requirements, we've got these so far. Uh, the final classes that, you, uh, that I would recommend are for the psych -so section, of course, psychology and sociology. And I estimate there are about 50 questions on this material. So 50 questions, again, that's quite a lot. Um, the problem with this material, though, the problem with psych and social as far as classes is that the classes themselves are often going to cover different material than the MCAT. So, for example, a psychology class that's focused on pre-meds is going to cover certain material that probably will be very relevant to the MCAT. But an intro to psych class that's more focused on psych majors might be less useful, and this is uh, much more the case with sociology. So sociology, when it comes to the MCAT, is a particular set of material that is often not going to be useful. So I would say an intro to psych class is going to be pretty useful. An intro to sociology class is going to be very, uh, it's really going to depend on who's offering that class, what department is offering that class, uh, what professor is offering that class, and kind of the focus. So with both of these classes, with psych and social, I would say ask around, ask people, uh, pre-meds especially, what psych class they recommend, ask an advisor. Um, if your advisors are good at your university, they'll be able to really help you with this. If they're not, then you should definitely ask other students. Um, ask them what psych classes and sociology classes are useful for this. The good news is there's a lot of material online to self-study psych and soc. Uh, so I wouldn't worry uh, as much about this, but I would definitely recommend you take an intro to psych class and probably also an intro to sociology class. And finally, and this is one that, that is not explicitly named in terms of the MCAT, but one that I would also recommend is stats. So an intro to stats class. There are lots of questions about uh, statistics, about sampling, about things like that uh, for the MCAT that kind of sneak up on you. And especially if you've never taken a stats class, uh, say in high school, your, your math wasn't particularly stats focused, uh, you might struggle with a lot of these things. So I would recommend you take a class on stats on, for example, you'll learn how, how they do sampling, how things like that. And now, of course, you're going to learn lots of stuff that you're not going to need for the MCAT, like you're going to learn for example, like t-tests and chi-squared and some of the more complicated stuff, and that stuff is not going to be on the MCAT. But I would say learning the, the basics of a stats class, especially a less quantitative 
focus stats class, if you can find one of those, uh, would be very, very useful for the MCAT. And that's one that people don't typically mention, but again, I, I strongly recommend that. All right, so these are all the requirements, all the required classes. Let me go ahead and rearrange them. All right, so here's what this is going to look like. Now, first of all, I briefly want to mention some additional classes that you could take. So this is going to depend, again, on your university. It's going to depend on what your major is. But some classes that I would recommend is I would recommend additional biochem classes or additional classes that cover the biochem material. So for example, when I was a student, I took a class called uh, proteins. So it was essentially a class on proteins, and that covered a lot of the same material as the biochem material. Uh, we had to memorize the amino acids for that class. We had to memorize uh, you know, certain mechanisms and things like that. But I found that class very, very useful uh, for the MCAT because it really covered a lot of this material over here. So your university might not offer that explicit class, obviously, but it's going to offer similar classes either in the bio department or in the chem department or a biochem department if you guys have that. Um, and that type of a class is going to be very useful. Now, again, any class that covers the material here that I talked about for biology uh, is going to be very useful. And you can see the full list of uh, the material that's covered uh, on the website, acmcat.com, and then go to resources, and you'll find the outline that, I, I, um, that I've compiled. But uh, any bio class that's going to cover this material is also going to be very useful. And uh, other than that, basically, those are the classes that you want to take. Now, what order should you take these classes in? So again, as I mentioned before, not all of these classes have the same importance. So some of these classes you're going to want to take earlier and others you're going to want to take later. So biochem in particular is a class, because it's so important, that's a class you want to take uh, immediately before your MCAT. And it doesn't have to be biochem specifically, but let's say you take biochem and you're taking the MCAT uh, after the next semester. The next semester, you could take a class that's, uh, like I mentioned, like that proteins class that I took, or a class that covers that material. That's going to be very, very helpful for you for studying for the MCAT. You also want to take a lot of these bio classes later on. You want to take them closer to your MCAT date because you don't want to have forgotten a lot of this. So in particular, I would recommend, uh, say, physiology and cell bio, uh, or again, similar classes, like I mentioned before. Um, that will help you. So for example, uh, when I was a student, I took a class called cancer biology. Uh, and cancer bio, you wouldn't think would be very relevant to, uh, to the MCAT, but actually it turned out it covered most of the same material as cell bio uh, and genetics for that matter, because it covered lots of like gene expression, uh, transcription, translation, uh, mutation, cell cycle, all that kind of stuff. And so it was actually very, very relevant to the MCAT. And so a class like that is going to be uh, very relevant um, again, as I mentioned before, a class like anatomy or say a class like evolution is not going to be very, very relevant to the MCAT. So I would recommend especially these subjects that you take them uh, closer to your MCAT date and preferably also say a Gen Chem 2 class, a, a, um, a chemistry class uh, as you approach your MCAT date to kind of help you uh, keep chemistry fresh. So again, this could be Gen Chem 2. It could be like an additional uh, chemistry class that's uh, related to this material, um, but it covers it in a different way. So uh, maybe you're a chem major, for example, or you're a bio major, and you have you want to do, say, a chem minor or something to that effect. I would recommend you take uh, something in this class closer to your MCAT date. Now, what are some classes that you, you don't really have to take before your MCAT date? So I would say uh, Orgo, for example, Orgo, Orgo 1, Orgo 2, these are classes that are not that important. These are classes that are very low yield, and most of the material on these uh, on this class, so for example, Orgo material in general, uh, in the class itself, you learn a lot of lots of different reaction mechanisms and stuff, and almost none of that is on the MCAT. What is on the MCAT for Orgo is going to be, uh, for example, the naming of different molecules, what is an ester, what is a thiol, what are all these different things, um, and then lots of the lab techniques, spectroscopy, that sort of thing. Uh, there is a bit in terms of reactions, but I, I would say it's so superficial. It's stuff that you can uh, probably just go back and review your notes if you've got good notes, or you can watch uh, lectures such as my videos or whatever. Uh, I think that would be pretty helpful. And I would say physics is kind of the same. Physics is is so heavy in terms of equations um, that if you really just kind of go back and review the equations and memorize the equations, you'll be good. Uh, so you don't necessarily have to take physics close to your MCAT date. It's really not that helpful for... Uh, you know, as you get closer to your MCAT date. So again, I would overall say that the classes that you should take close to your MCAT date are physiology, cell bio, biochem, and maybe some type of a gen chem, right? Psych, social, and stats, this is kind of stuff that you just want to have some familiarity with the concepts. 
uh, so that when you go to st MCAT study, when you go into memorize terms and things like that, you kind of have a basis on which to memorize those terms and to understand those concepts and to really kind of apply them for this section. So if you guys have any questions about specific classes or about what I talked about here, uh, leave them in the comments down below. You can also shoot me an email. Um, finally, I just want to make one uh, one disclaimer, which is that this is all, ta I'm, I've been talking about this in terms of what you want to do for the MCAT. This is also going to depend on what your major is. So for example, some of these classes are going to, for example, anatomy and physiology is, I believe, a requirement for bio majors in lots of different departments. So even though it's not really required for the MCAT, it is a requirement for your major. So this has nothing to do with what you should take as a pre-med. Um, and uh, for that matter, med schools might have different requirements. So for example, med schools typically will have two requirements of two semesters of physics, two semesters of gen chem, two semesters of orgo, and they require lab with all of these, uh, all of these classes. And so, so this is typically a requirement for, um, for med school applications. And so you want, you're gonna wanna take a look at that. You're gonna wanna ask those med schools uh, admissions committees and things about those requirements and about what's going to strengthen your application. This is just in terms of what's going to get re get you ready for, for the MCAT. And so again, please leave any questions in the comments down below, or you can also shoot me an email here. Uh, thank you guys for watching.